Hello, this is Greg Allison with Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm coming to you from my office study on the way hours of the morning of 29 January 2020. With the question, is the civet cat out of the bag? Yeah, civet cat. Greg, what do you mean by civet cat? Well, as you know, the SARS epidemic was blamed on the civet cat. And this uh, Wuhan version of the coronavirus is also blamed on uh, having a point of origin of a meat market in Wuhan, in which live civet cat, among many other things, were served or sold. They were actually selling live civet cats, and which this is a civet cat, by the way, a very angry civet cat, I might add. And I suppose you would be too if somebody had you by the tail. And maybe we've been gotten by the tail too with the stories of the numbers and what's going on with this viral outbreak. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at uh, what's happening in terms of the spread. The numbers that are projected, which are very concerning, uh, what's taking place because of that, and what the numbers may actually be. And we're going to look at quarantine and what quarantine can look like to you, how bad that can be. And we're going to look at what you can do. But I've also got a ray of hope. There is opportunity in this great tragedy, and it is a great tragedy. I'm not going to understate it. It's already a great tragedy. Is it as bad as some people think? Some people say, oh, Greg, you're fear mongering. I'm just going to lay out the facts. I will put out some points of contention that make it seem that these facts are not what they appear to be, that there must be a cover-up going on of some sort, and, you know, we'll let the chips fall where they may. The key thing about this coronavirus is there's just a lot that we don't know yet because it's still new. It could burn out tomorrow morning and I'll be over and blow away. Although it's not very likely. It's just getting ramped up. I do not expect it to blow away tomorrow morning. Uh, will it calm down? Will it become more virulent? How will the mutations of this virus run? Time will tell. But we're going to look at some examples and we're going to look at the Spanish flu in this discussion too. So again, here's a civic cat. This is blamed for the SARS epidemic of 2003 in China and uh, supposedly banned from being ate today in China. But this civic, civic cats like this were, they're actually just a civet. We uh, kind of call them civet cat by, uh, <laughs> uh, as a colloquialism. And a lot of Americans think the Chinese are eating cats. Hey, some people may. I've heard of Americans that eat cats back in the Great Depression. All that aside. And if you're really hungry, you'd be surprised what you will do, and your, your cultural norms may change somewhat. However, this is uh, the animal that we refer to as a civet cat, a very unhappy one, as I said earlier. So, all right, enough for, for this poor little animal here. Let's uh, move on a little bit. i got to move this. Here's what we see today. This is the John Hopkins projections for where we're at with this outbreak. And as you can see, it's already up to 6,057. Now, what's instructive is to look at this curve. This curve is the case number. This is the days. The days are linear. The case numbers are growing rapidly. You see it started out kind of flat, and now it's running straight up. This, my friends, is nonlinear. It is uh, exponential. What that means is it's like doubling within a certain period of time. And uh, apparently, according to some, it's doubling and a number of cases about every uh, six to seven days. Now, there's that old adage of the mathematician who did some favor for the emperor, and the emperor said, how shall I pay you? And the mathematician always said, just give me a grain of corn uh, today, and two grains tomorrow, and four grains the next day, and just double them every day. And the emperor laughed. He thought that was just funny. I said, sure, I'll do you that. And when, uh, in short order of time, he discovered that he was taking the whole nation's uh, grain reserves and giving it to this mathematician, uh, off of the head. <laughs> he did not appreciate being tricked like that. <laughs> you got to understand, biological systems grow fast. Bacteria multiply fast. And each bacteria multiplies fast. And so what you get is lots of dumbness. The growth rate is not linear like we tend to think of things. It goes like this until the point that you fill up the Petri dish, whatever that Petri dish may be. In this case, it may be the global population of people within whatever constraints that it has uh, effectivity in infecting people. And uh, the worst thing we will worry about, of course, is the mortality rate. 
So all that said, look at this, 6,057 cases. And you can scroll down here and look at the countries. Uh, this still shows the U.S. is having five cases. Cambodia one, Nepal one, Sri Lanka one, uh, Germany four. That's new. South Korea four, Australia five, Singapore, Malaysia, Japan seven, 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 uh, Taiwan eight, Hong Kong eight, Thailand fourteen. Yeah, that is, if you can trust these numbers. Now, if you look over here, let me move my, let me move around. She is right now 132 deaths and only 110 recovered. <laughs> that doesn't look good. That suggests a very high mortality rate, although the mortality rate numbers I hear are much less than uh, that, which looks like over 50%. So um, but that's still a little bit disturbing to look at that. And then uh, there are those that uh, suggest that this whole uh, system here was funded by the same people who funded uh, a little study. Let's see here. My uh, clickers aren't really coming out where I want them to. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There was a little thing called uh, Epidemic 201 exercise. And I thought I had it pulled up here. Never mind. Uh, it, that thing was funded by John Hopkins University, or pro produced by John Hopkins University. And uh, <clears throat> was funded by the uh, Melinda Gates Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, with a lot of funding from a certain politician I like to call Blimmersburgers. And Blimmersburger seems to be behind things that, like I said, you might not to be too appreciative of in many cases. So, uh, and he also, unfortunately, uh, these guys are funding this site here, which is a John Hopkins uh, site. And you can see this data uh, was last updated. They do show you the last update. And this is the official cases. This is the official cases that update. There is another site that's said to be a little more recent in the updates, but they use the same official numbers. Uh, here it starts out with the countries. This is BNO, just BNO news.com. It starts out with uh, all these different countries, talks about sources. And you've got a map here too, a global map. Uh, if you go back here, this map is also actually a global map. If you click down here, you will see that you can scroll and move around and say, well, you can see cases in Toronto and up here, British Columbia, Washington State, California, uh, Arizona, Chicago, and the United States. And there's the Germany, France, and you can see this thing has spread, it spread fast. You know, this is not a very old epidemic. You know, it started in December. They started tracking it in January. They said, what day did they show you for zero? Uh, yeah, this is like the middle of January. And the cases were almost nothing. Then boom, how did that happen? In any event, uh, this is a short time, fast growing, fast progressing uh, disease. So just the fact that it can get out so far so fast, begs the question of, is, can the cases only be 6,057? What's being able to say here? And how can you have such a low caseload when, in fact, uh, it is spreading so fast? That's one big question. The other big question is, if you've only got 6,000 cases and you've only got, you know, 132 deaths. Why do you put 50 million people in quarantine in China? 50 million people in quarantine. Why are you in the Wuhan, city of Wuhan, and the Hubei district building in a rapid emergency fashion to be done within a week? Not one, not two, but now three large hospitals on the order of a thousand bed hospitals. All that wants to be done in a week because you've got 6,000 patients. So there we got a lot of beds in the hospitals there in the city of Wuhan. And everybody with a flu and flu isn't gonna be there, and especially you know if you can treat them in a few days or we can get them out and sock them through. And the question is, are they building enough? Well, we'll be looking at that. We're gonna look at these numbers a little bit more. So, close, so we're gonna move over here. And we're gonna see that some people are not exactly agreeing with the Chinese numbers. So for example, 
uh, there may be as many as 100,000 cases already in China. This guy named Ferguson told the Guardian News. And so, well, who is this? And here it talks about the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation here and some others. Uh, this article is containing new cor uh, coronavirus may not be feasible, uh, experts say, and they weren't a possible sustained global spread. And what this is going to, it's uh, work by this university here in Toronto by Dr. Allison uh, McGear, Toronto-based infectious disease specialist, uh, who's also helped with Saudi Arabia in the MERS case. So I said university, pardon me. Uh, so this is a Toronto study. Well, they're not the only ones making these kind of suggestions. It's most interesting that these guys here in uh, uh, South Korea, no, this is Hong Kong. Oh yeah, so there's uh, different groups here. Hong Kong is projecting, uh, this is when, when they, they were projecting 4,000 cases, talking about 44,000. Also, we'll find there's a university in uh, South Korea that's also making the claims that uh, there's about 10 times more people infected than in fact what we find uh, on these websites, the official reported cases. And uh, an individual that I met back in LeetCon, uh, David Debine, who has his uh, channel uh, 2030, Global 2030, well, Outlet 2030, <laughs> let's go back and double check that. But David Debine's channel is uh, about uh, uh, the cold weather that we're expecting because he is uh, telling us about Grand Solar Mantle. And he is in China right now. He and his girlfriend trying to get out of there. And what he's telling us is there are tens of thousands of people infected. Uh, we have seen photographs of uh, people lying in the streets, sick, dead, the hospital beds full. What does this mean? Does this mean the official numbers are uh, right or wrong? Or did, is there so many questions here? Look at these streets here. We'll come back to that when we start talking about quarantine. So, um, my friends, there's this one individual here. You should, you should go to his site. Uh, go to his website, log on to him, and uh, subscribe. Dr. Paul Cottrell. This guy's got several advanced degrees. Yeah, he's at Harvard. He's doing some interesting research. And he's been on the Leak Project. He's been on Oppenheimer Ranch Project, several other programs, talking about this in the past couple nights. And what he's telling us is that he's finding uh, when you go to the genome sequence, and he's looked at it, and he said there's whole entire intact sections of genome from bat coronaviruses, like eight different versions. And he finds these sections in their entirety intact at the beginning and the end of the, uh, the genome and something right in the middle of it. Uh, and he says that's highly, 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 highly unusual and makes him suspect that this is a manufactured virus. That's what he believes. I'm just telling you that's what he believes. But that is kind of interesting and scary because he believes also the sections uh, taken, the code taken and inserted and used are the kind of codes that make it more virulent, more deadly. Uh, and he talked about the uh, S receptors that make it more likely to stick in the lungs and a number of things like that, the little spikes on the crown. It's called Corona because it's named after the crown because it's got these little spikes that stick out everywhere. Although it's not just, you know, around, it's everywhere. So um, that's the funny thing about this virus. It looks like a little ball with all these little spiky things. And all those little spiky things are points where you attach to your cells. That's what those are. And it's got lots of them. Probably gives it some latitude for going to different type of cells. All that said. So, Greg, what does this mean? Uh, manufactured virus. Well, we don't know yet. You know, I've cited in previous videos, uh, Dr. Uh, Martin Rees, the astronomer Royale of the United Kingdom. And Dr. S uh, Sir, excuse me, Sir Martin Rees, it's been knighted, uh, wrote a book called Our Final Hour. I may have a copy of that. I know I do. So I can find it in short order. Our Final Hour. Uh, I have it. I've read it. Uh, it's not one I see right off the top of the bat here. It's here in my bookshelf with a zillion other books. It is in that bookshelf. I will. I'll show it to you in the not too distant future. Uh, but anyway, our final hour uh, talks about the challenges, why he thinks our society's got only a 50% chance of surviving the next 
100 years. I think it's highly optimistic. That might be the number for the next 10 years, the way things are going, 50%. So in, his, in the final hour, one of the greatest threats he perceives is a biological uh, engineering, specifically bioera and bioterra. Uh, bioterra is uh, an act of violence that uses biological mechanisms, shall we say. I'm trying not to use so many keywords here. And also bio era, which is their accidental release. Now, just because there's something out there that's been engineered and released does not necessarily mean it was released intentionally because there's been a lot of accidental releases and shipments of things. And it just happens there was that facility at Wuhan, really close, a level four uh, biological uh, research facility, really close to this meat market, as I'm told. At least it's in the same city, Wuhan. That's interesting. And its pod purpose was to study the coronavirus. Now, of course, if you were somebody else who wanted to uh, unleash a biological assault upon China, well, there would be no better place to do it and no better way to sneak in than to do it at a meat market in a city with a biological research center such as they have there. And again, it's still a good chance that this is entirely a, 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 an evolved natural organism. Whatever the case, it's here. And it's spread. And it's spreading fast. So what do we know? Uh, there's something called a R0 value. So let's go over to the Spanish flu. Look at it. its, uh, uh, I got a pull down menu. It keeps popping up every time I want to click up here where I want to go. So here we are with the Spanish flu. The Spanish flu ran uh, over a two year period from January uh, 1918 to uh, December 1920. And this is the peak period of it right here where it shows the virulence picking up. Uh, it had a, it came in basically three waves. It had a small wave, it kind of died off, but it was still existing. Then it really exploded, uh, come down and, and had another little minor explosion, which was pretty significant by the way. So the Spanish uh, flu was believed to have killed somewhere between 50 and 100 million people in a day and age in which uh, the world's population was far less than it is today. And let's see, so it was believed that it killed something like uh, three to 5% of the global population, if I recall right from what I've been looking at. Yeah, I can't really tell from my notes here, but so that's a very significant very, very significant, one of the most deadly plagues in hundreds of years, not as deadly as the bubonic plague in terms of total population taken out. The bubonic plague took out like half the people. Um, but the bubonic plague was a different kind of a plague. So, but it just tells you that disease can get really bad. And the bad thing is two years. And even if, you know, you look at this bump, this might be, you know, we're like right here with this coronavirus. We're right here. We're actually, we're like right about here. So look at this. Uh, this is over a month right here. How long do you need to prepare for? That's over a month. Look here. December, I'm not sure. This is from September toward the end of September, all the way through October and November, and most of the way through December. This is months. Uh, you know, so you, you, this is two to three months right here, two to three months. And then you got another one about the same time frame here. Not as strong as that one, but very significant. And there's nothing insignificant in these periods. So if you're in a quarantine, how long is it going to last? What are you going to be able to do? Look at this. Uh, not that one. Hang on. Did I shut it down? Had a video here somewhere of a quarantine. I'll shut that down. I'll have to shrink this. I can see where I'm looking. Yeah, here we go. You got to see this, my friends. Look at the streets here. Look at the streets. Look how empty they are. Do you see pedestrians? Uh, there's a bicycle right here, a bicycle or maybe something down there. This is a major city center in Wuhan, a city of 11 million people in a main thoroughfare. Crickets, my friends, crickets. Shops are closed. 
businesses are closed, factories are closed, grocery stores are closed. If municipal services breaks down, is are people going to go out and fix them? Uh, will we be run the risk of fire, loss of water, sanitation? How long will this go on? How long will they be under quarantine? And if they are under quarantine a short time, is that enough? But what will you do if suddenly this comes to America? It is here. What happens if this thing is spread and they decide here that we have to have quarantines like that? What if they lock down your city? What if they lock down where you live? Your whole district. They're locking down whole districts in China, not just the cities, entire districts, entire provinces. What would you do? What would you do if suddenly you can't leave your house and you can't leave it for two or three months? You saw that thing I just showed you on the uh, 1918 Spanish flu? How much food do you have in your home? What do you have? How can you survive? You know, it's really too late to be thinking about prepping already. It's you've got a little window of time, just a little window of time to run out and buy beans, rice, dried beans, dried rice, sugar, salt. These are things that can last for years. Get you some buckets, some five-gallon buckets. Pour these things in the five-gallon buckets. I better get some of those Mylar bags and put them in there if you can. Throw in some oxygen absorbers, heat sell them. If you can't, just put them in the buckets. If you can't get the buckets, stack them up somewhere where you don't think rats or something get at them. Buy rice. Buy the things that you know will last. Sugar. Uh, uh, I already said that. Honey, of course, we know lasts forever. Twinkies. <laughs> do you really want to do that? <sighs> It'd be pretty desperate. Maybe for entertainment, something to practice, use for target practice. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a good use for a Twinkie. <laughs> so, <laughs> my friends. <coughs> Yes, you must always be able to laugh in adversity. Don't panic. Even when it gets terrible, don't panic. Because when you panic, you lose your mind. You lose your perspective. You lose your ability to think. Stay strong. Stay still. Do not panic. Plan. Prepare. And deal with it when it comes. If you have to get in a hurry, do that. If you have to be resolute with somebody to contain them, to keep things uh, under security, do what you got to do. Take care of business. But don't panic. Panic will serve no one. It will not serve you or anyone around you. Do not panic. So I've already done some videos that talk about what to do. Very much how to protect yourself. A lot of this stuff. But I'm telling you right now is the time to go. Right now is the time to take care of your business because you don't know what's coming. And let's see here. Somewhere I had my video. Yeah. This video was a video. One of the videos where I'm telling you what to do. In fact, that's what I say. Coronavirus, what to do, status. Now, if you need prepping supplies, of course, you can always come here and uh, click show more. You click show more, or you can go to my often pin comment notes, go to comment notes, and then like the pin note at the top, and you'll usually find my notes that show things like all, many different videos I think you might be interested in. But also you want to find uh, things to support my channel. And one right here is my Patreon supply. You can still order stuff right now. And if you want to order stuff, get it while you can. Because the transportation may stop in a short order. I'm thinking we got a couple weeks, maybe three weeks, long enough to get this stuff in before they start shutting things down here. I don't know when it would. I don't know when we'd go quarantine. I have no idea. I have no idea how fast it's going to spread here or even if it will spread here. How bad will it be here? Uh, we don't know yet. But what I do know is that you can order long-term food storage right here. Look at that. It's looking pretty yummy right there. Let's see. My internet's slow today. Already prepared. Five-gallon buckets. And we got uh, all this stuff here, too. Here, a one-year supply. One-year supply for you. Uh, and that's a $2,987. Now, if you're eating three meals a day, that uh, works out that uh, you're only spending, you know, just about $2.70 a meal because three meals a day is $1,095. Divide $1,095 in this figure, and you get $2.70 per meal. That's a pretty good deal for a meal. <laughs> so, um, and they have many other types of foods in here. You can get, uh, I like 
uh, what I like is these number 10 cans. I really like number 10 cans. Bam. So if you click those links, and uh, uh, you can support my channel and prep yourself. I'm not going to go into any more great details here, but look, we got sales. There are sales on here. Save $100. Save $56. I mean, hey, for the amount of food you get in here, uh, look, 484 servings for $188. Uh, you can get all kind of good foods here, including uh, black bean burgers, which is a great source of uh, protein that's cheap. Uh, all things considered, look here, black bean burgers, $14.95 for a number 10 can with 38 servings. Wow, that's pretty cool. And hey, black beans are great. They're yummy. Look here, corn chowder. Yum. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. All through here. Many, many, many things you can pick from. Look at that. Honey wheat bread. <laughs> Hey, honey, I got the wheat bread. Uh, strawberries, fruit's important. And, you know, you may have to get dried fruit. This stuff lasts for 25 to 30 years. The cans are rated for 30 years. Those buckets are rated for 25 years. And quite frankly, these the, these free dries, freeze dries, freeze these cans should last way beyond that, just like the other canned goods. So uh, that's, that's something to consider. I'm going to kill that video. Oh, yeah, there's also other survival items here. Survival gear, water filtration purification and heirloom seeds and they got some specials running now on uh sprouting supplies and things like that so my patient supply check it out uh i will put links below this video too for that so uh oh yeah in my uh last uh, live chat my apologies i had to cut it short oh i think i killed something i did not kill i was planning to kill this video yeah in this video I got into, I was out in the boonies and I got into an area where I wasn't getting any signal when I was trying to read everybody's comments and my video signal cut out and I just wasn't able to recover. And so <laughs> we cut off. So I'll do another live chat soon and I'll try to make up for that and pay more attention to you guys. But in this live chat, I was trying to spend my time first putting out you guys what you needed to do. And I was too busy driving. I could not be looking at the uh, screen. So forgive me for that, please. Uh, like I said, we'll do more live chats in the near future. Uh, yeah, watch out for this thing here. So uh, here's the only thing. Ah, this is the one I was looking for. This is the little exercise that I mentioned a minute ago, and I thought I couldn't find it. Uh, look at this. In a recent simulation, which was done back in I believe, November, was October, just back in October, on what? Coronavirus, 65 million people killed according to simulation. Interesting. This is what they pick. And what's going on now with the 2019 uh, NCOV, which is novel, NCOV, which means it's new. Uh, this is interesting when you consider the people involved with it. I mean, so what you got to do, John Hopkins, you know, cited here and some others like our favorite uh, founders of, you know, soft micros, said backwards. <laughs> you know what I mean? There we are, look at these guys. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I remember what I said back over here on the other side about who's behind this site. So do you really want to trust the numbers when maybe they're also behind uh, this thing? Hmm, highly suspicious. <coughs> highly, highly suspicious. So check it out. I believe it's called Event 201. You can search on this. Yeah, Event 201 simulation. There it is. And also there's uh, airline traffic. There's still airline traffic going. In fact, there's a live uh, thing that you can look for airline traffic. Let's see if we can find it here. There you go. how it uses stuff again. Oh, well, we won't look for it right now. I'll show it in a future video if the traffic's still going on. So, with all this stuff happening, you know, you think this would be the number one news item, but of course, the American so-called mainstream news really don't cover news. I mean, look at this. You know, it's all about the political patent paste, political soap opera. Oh, coronavirus finally made it up to the top quad of stories. I haven't seen that on the news channels in a while. Plane carrying about 210 U.S. evacuees from China diverted to California Air Base. Uh-oh. Well, this is a new article here. Look at this, my friends. I mentioned this plane in that video I did 
was in Georgia, plane carrying U.S. evacuees from China amid coronavirus. Well, I'm glad it's at an air base. Maybe they got more security. These aircraft coming back to really, really, really concern me, my friends. <coughs> Let's see. Breaking down. Sorry about that. That's a problem logging into Fox News. Anytime you change anything, they got too many things that want to play sound. My apologies. But that's, an, that's a breaking thing that uh, coronavirus made it up within, you know, usually you got to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page to find anything on coronavirus, which just tells me the news is not the news. Uh, I'll check that out and talk about it later. That plane I did talk about earlier. I think I was one of the, I probably maybe even the first YouTuber to talk about that flight. I brought that out real early on my little drive uh, uh, live cast. So that flight concerns me. Uh, we're, there's a thousand Americans in Wuhan. Uh, the Boeing 737, no, 767, they only brought 210 home. They, there's 265 seats, I believe, in that plane. So why they didn't evacuate everybody, what the criteria was, I don't know. They're mainly we're looking at uh, people that work with the embassy, the State Department, I suppose. So, you know, they, they had preferential treatment. All right, this video is going long, but what I've done is I've laid out for you a number of things. But let's give you some hope. Let's talk about something that's hopeful here. Because I've always said in every, hey, I've chaired two power grid defense conferences. And in each conference, I open the conference saying this. No matter how bad it gets, no matter how ugly things are, no matter how tough the going gets, I always rest in the assurance that around, there is a silver lining around every mushroom cloud. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty stark. And this outbreak is a horrible event, comparable. To a mushroom cloud. It is horrible, tragic. And we should pray for all these victims. Meditate. Find ways to help them. If you can donate something, do so. That said, there is a crack in the system. There is a ray of hope. There is something that we can take advantage of to enable us and help us with that. So let me go to my share thing here. I am going to stop this share and do another share because there is a new opportunity, my friends, an opportunity based on people waking up because of this, because what's happening here, people are waking up and discovering that their government is not adequate. It does not live up to the promises that they expect of it. And that the government may be often the cause of some of the uh, problems we're having, or at least certainly not helpful. You take China, for example. In China, they have kind of a religious sense. You know, uh, it's a communist country and officially atheistic. You know, there's a, a lot of belief amongst all peoples there. And it has been a historical case that in bad times, they would blame the government. And when times got really bad, when there's uh, really bad uh, environmental things going on or whatever, it brings the country down, economic or whatever. Usually, the people do not support the government anymore. They may be thinking this totalitarian regime of Xi Jinping uh, is time for it to go. In fact, there's a lot of, of traffic and chatter in their social media that's using code words because they can't say things that evoke the censors. But there's a whole lot of other traffic going on there now that, that, that's certainly a reflection of discontent, massive discontent in China. Like I always say in all my videos, there's good people in every country of the world, and nobody wants to be under the lid or the jackboot of a totalitarian regime. Except for some students here in the United States who have had a very easy life and have not yet come to the appreciation of what that means. So there is the hope China could change, just like I was telling you that Iran could change because of those missile attacks. So we certainly have simultaneously two major countries that are living under totalitarian regimes that may change in short order. You know, a little prayer and meditation just might be in order to try to help that take place. So let me do, oh, I shouldn't have shut that down. Let me do a new share here. I want to show you a little map and discuss something that we're planning here.
and that is this uh, event here. Two minutes for peace, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Because this is where the most of the people are that's going to be hearing this message. And this is where we can grab our most effectivity. 2 p.m., two minutes of peace, 0202, 2 February 2020. Yeah, 2 p.m., two minutes, 0202, 2020. There's two totalitarian regimes. One that got uh, a lot of consternation against it from the fire of two missiles that brought down a Ukrainian airplane with students from Tehran there. The people there are still fit to be tied. Notice uh, Tehran has not sent any more missiles to America's way uh, over there, although there were recently three uh, Katusha rockets apparently that fell within the green zone of our embassy, which I've not reported on that case because I, I see that as a very limited thing, hopefully. But what that says is we have an opportunity to appeal to people all over this world to stop for two minutes. If you don't have a belief system, that's fine. This is a moment of silent protest. This is a moment that you can stick out and get the system to stop what you're doing. Whatever it is, just stop and be quiet. Be silent for two minutes. Let's stop the world. For those of you that have faith and belief in a greater creator or whatever it is, that you place your faith in, whatever you pray to, pray, meditate in a positive way for peace, prosperity, for healing. It may be that what we're seeing in this outbreak is the opposite of peace. It certainly is not bringing peace, and it may have been intentional. If so, that definitely falls under the realm of what we're pushing for here. <coughs> so this, if you're in the Mideast, Join us. You don't want a major conflict in your home territory. You don't want to be ground zero for another major war or World War III or whatever may come with you. I'm sure you've had a belly full of that stuff. Join with us if you're in Iraq. Join us if you're in Iran, if you're Persian, that is. Yes. And join us if you're in Saudi Arabia. Join us if you're in Europe. Join us if you're in China, Hong Kong. Koreas, join us. Those of us who are here to spread this, spread this in your social media. Two minutes for peace. This is what we're looking for. A prayer, a meditation, a time to stop. If nothing else, you can get connected to yourself. If you don't know how to connect to a higher power, at least get connected to yourself. And think. Be quiet. Do not participate in the system for two minutes. Hopefully, I'm making just a little blip and get people around the world awakened to the fact that these governments have been pulling a lot of stuff over our eyes for a long time. And if we can get uh, peace in, uh, uh, with, with a, a brand and get that uh, the Ayatollahs uh, shaking and clicking and get their system toppled, you know, hopefully that will have some effects here in the United States and uh, the, the, we will pull our boys home. Hopefully, we can not be going out and doing a lot of the nefarious things that we've done to incite hatred in, in the world. We should stop these drone attacks on wedding parties to get one person. That is immoral. And it fans the flames of terrorism because nobody wants to be, you know, for the sake of Uncle Joe that you may not know who, what it does or doesn't do because somebody's after him, they take out everybody in the family and nieces and nephews. That's insane. It's crazy. We should not participate in that kind of thing. So, I do believe in a strong defense. Absolutely. I am a veteran, by the way. And my family has participated. My granddad was a veteran of World War I. My dad's a veteran of World War II, and he's still alive. He's going to be 99 in April, and he still walks, talks, <laughs> and lives by himself. He still drives. So, um, a strong man. My brothers, uh, one of my brothers served in the Vietnam era. I was in the army during the Iranian hostage crisis and was packed up to go to Iran. <laughs> it didn't happen because they had another plan, but they told me I was going to Iran. <laughs> I was a four back at that time before I went to Fort Alaska. And I had, uh, uh, my son did go to Kuwait and then into Iraq during the second Gulf War. So I got a family history of army defense 
and the latter case that might have been considered as offense. So, although my son is not of that nature of person, but he was there. Whatever the case is, my family has been directly behind support and defense, and will remain so, including myself. But I do not support all this campaigning around the world. I think we should bring our boys home. I think we have been we've overextended. We could save a lot of money and, and refocus on rebuilding our country and making things better here. And everybody could do the same. If we could take all our military expenditures and turn them into positive projects, we could accomplish so much to solve so many of the world's problems, make the world such a better place, and reach out into space. We need to do it cooperatively. Though. Our, our adversaries you know, would have to see things the same way. And right now, China has not been one of them. China has been very adventurous with their uh, uh, island development, they're building basically unsinkable aircraft carriers in the Chow, South China Sea, and I've done several videos on that already. Uh, their, their adventures in expanding their influence within the Pacific Islands, Africa, South America. Um, it is a Sun Tzu type conflict that's underway, apparently. But hopefully that'll cave in. So that's the opportunity to push for peace with respect to China. If the regime should fall, the people could take over. China would be an awesome nation with a democratic power. China would be, everybody would love it. Everybody would want to go there. I mean, my gosh, China would be awesome and peaceful, hopefully. So here's the chance for peace, and that's the most important thing. Hey, the people there deserve prosperity. as much. Everybody deserves prosperity. Some people say we can't all live in prosperity. Oh, yes, we can. We can live in the prosperity of Western-style level of prosperity and have very little uh, environmental impact on the world. I've done a video where I've touched on this topic about my universal habitat. I'll do more discussion on that in the future. I've talked about it in my video with the Gervais family, uh, my two videos with them, how they live off a tenth of an acre and produce uh, all the food they eat except grain products and sell and make a living off that land. Uh, yes, we can live in prosperity. We can live within our means with the land that we have available to us. We could feed 2 billion people in America from our lawns alone using their device type techniques, which are basically just organic gardening, raised beds, and some trellising. It's nothing high tech, but we can also make it high tech. You know, if you're too lazy to go out and plant a seed, you can have a robot to do that for you. <laughs> so, you know, there's no excuse. We can take care of these things. But we also have to take care of our power grid. We have to take care to make sure our nation don't crash and fall and falter. But we can do that. We can work together. So this is one of the, the new dedications I have with this channel is to push for peace, push for prosperity, push for uh, us defending the power grid and Established communities that can survive and get on the other side should it indeed hit the fan. Let's try to, 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 to either stop it from hitting the fan or to mitigate the effects of it. Some of you have the uh, uh, apocalyptic interpretation of uh, things to come, and maybe all that's going to happen. If that happens, then let's try to be prepared to merge on the other side as best we can. And I'm not challenging any world or any creator here. Because I do believe in greater creator. And I believe in the end, uh, even in the book of Revelations, with uh, so many people wiped out, there are survivors. There are human beings on earth. So whatever you believe in, uh, my thumbnail has a four horsemen of the apocalypse up top. That should tell you something about what I think. Whatever you believe in, though, I do believe that we can pull through. We can survive, thrive, and emerge on the other side. So this channel has been dedicated to the proposition of helping you know how to survive, thrive, and stay out of the hive. These are important things to know to get through the times that are coming at us. The hive could totally end your individuality, end you as who you are, turn you into a worker ant. Do you want to go there? So I, I beat on this. I beat on it. I didn't go into a lot of details today on the whys and how, well, the hows for, for prepping. You ought to know that already. Uh, and I've talked about that, how to protect yourself in the coronavirus and those other videos. Okay, I will go to that, into that more again in the future, but I just wanted to paint the picture today. Uh, you know, when I'm doing my live sessions, I do it from my phone because my, I don't have the right software set up on my desktop yet. It costs a lot of money, takes time, and all that to get that set up. 
and our channel just really isn't big enough right now to justify it. So help me grow. So if you have not subscribed to my channel, subscribe. Click the update notification bell. Share my videos widely, especially this two minutes for peace. And I've got videos where I talk specifically about these two minutes for peace, and I will talk about it more in sub upcoming videos and live sessions until we get to the 2nd of February, which is coming fast, my friends. It's less than a week away. So please spread this. Let's please make this happen because we've got this pandemic upon us now, it looks like. It's not been declared a pandemic yet. It's an emergency in China. The World Health Organization has not quite yet declared it a global emergency yet. They may, if you get locked down for months on end, I mean, this is gonna have huge economic impacts, my friends. China's producing so much stuff. And a lot of that stuff is key components of things we produce here and in other countries. Things will be shutting down, slowing down when you can't get the critical supplies and parts. And the impact on China is huge economically for this. Fortunately for them, most of it, so then that week of, or at least starting out with the week, they have their Chinese New Year. Uh, their, their, uh, their occasion is usually a week long in which they do shut factories down for that. But now this is way beyond that. The quarantine goes way beyond it. And it's expected to last longer. Look at that Spanish flu. It's good to go on for a long time. Be prepared, not scared. Prepare. Keep your eyes wide open and head on a swivel because we don't know what's coming. We don't know how bad this thing is going to be. I'm not here to scare you. I'm just here to make you aware, to open your eyes so that you can be prepared, not scared. I don't know what's coming. You don't know what's coming. We just know that it's not looking pretty right now. This could get way worse or it could blow over, quite honestly. We just don't know. Prospects of it blowing over don't look too promising right now. This could get way worse. It can mutate. We don't know how long this thing's going to last, how bad it's going to be, if it is indeed manufactured and designed to maximize damage. Look, yeah. Oh, we do know this. There's one thing I didn't really share, one data point. I'll probably have to bring this up earlier in another video, is that the infectivity rate called R0 for this virus is deemed to be for the coronavirus uh, 3.6 to 4.0. That means every person's got it, spreads it to 3.6 to 4 people, basically about 4 people. Ebola was 2.4 to 2.7, and the 1918 flu was just 1.4 to 2.8. So this thing has the prospects of spreading a whole lot more. The 1918 Spanish flu had a mortality rate that might have been as high as 20%. It's thought that this coronavirus is 3%, but if it spreads more, it can still get a lot of people. Uh, we have so many more people in the world today. <clears throat> it's not a pretty thing. It's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. Let's hope that the mortality rate goes down. And there's something else maybe you can meditate toward. Give yourself some extra time to pray. Give yourself extra occasions. How about 2 p.m. every day, uh, Eastern time and your own time too. So I will go more into this. 2 p.m. thing. I've got other videos on it, but watch those videos where I lay it out, what to do, why to do it, and we'll talk about it some more. My friends, I beat this horse quite a bit. Uh, I think there are four horses here, the, the four horsemen, and I think I beat on every one of them just about it. <laughs> no, I didn't really talk to them out and call them out per se, uh, but you've been great. Uh, if you stayed with me this long, that's amazing. But that proves that you care. That proves that you're an agent of change. It proves that you can make this happen. So go out and print out posters. Take this uh, this little, uh, if you can see my uh, uh, Facebook page, uh, grab the banner off. You take that picture of, of the map. Take it for myself. Take, uh, take it off my uh, uh, website. Take it off these places and use it. Make posters. Take them out there, spread them around, talk to your companies, talk to your friends, share this uh, two minutes for peace. Share my videos about the coronavirus because I have told you what to do. I have told you how to prepare. I gave you a little bit of that here and I will give you some more in the, in the days to come. But for now, we have gone really long. <laughs> Thank you for watching.